we have Reverend Sheila Gatro. She is assistant minister at the Unity Church in Walnut Creek. She is truly a master teacher of radical forgiveness. And Reverend Sheila is going to share her gift with us today with her talk, What in the World Are You Doing? <laughs> Reverend Sheila, let's give a warm welcome. don't know me. My name is Sheila Gotro and I am a diva. A divinely inspired visionary awakened. And as a diva, I dance through life authentically alive. I have the right to say no, the freedom to say yes, and the power to change my mind. I am a spiritual diva. And so are you, and guys, you're devos. <laughs> so I've been watching the news, and that's what made me choose that topic. Now, if some of you say, oh, I don't watch the news. And it's okay. When I used to work with Marianne Williamson, she said, um, the news is God's way of giving us our prayer list. <laughs> So, you don't have to watch the news, but somewhere you're going to see the effects of the news somewhere in your life and you're going to have to pray. So, you may as well watch the news, get your prayer list earlier, so you can do something about it, okay? So, we've been seeing a lot of crazy, divine madness playing out on our planet, have we not? Yes. We have seen an increase, a tremendous increase in violent activity, have we not? Uh, we can look at the school shootings and the theater shootings and the mall shootings. We can look at the testing of nuclear missiles. We can look at uh, increased bullying of our children, demeaning, demoralizing behavior, music, etc., on our planet, and three or four more reality shows on TV. <laughs> What in the world are we doing? I mean, what's up with that? And so I, I've been saying, okay, I know for a fact that I'm not seeing this so I can continue in life like, you know, how we new thought people do. God is good all the time, and all the time God is good, and everything is in divine order, and it is all perfect. I am poised and centered in the Christ consciousness. Nothing can disturb the calm peace of my soul. Nothing can disturb the calm peace of my soul. Nothing can disturb the calm peace of my soul. Perhaps, truth students, we've gotten a little too comfortable. Perhaps, what is playing out on our planet today is a call for action. And if not us, who? And if not now, when? So we've got to come off of our knees and in our meditative postures and begin to look at what is it that is ours to do. What is it that is ours to do? Because I really want to know what in the world are we doing? I came in on the train a couple of days ago and I took the public transportation over to my master colorist, David Fisher, because I don't do gray. And then I took another bus, took two buses that day, and of course I went on to my loctician who tightened up my locks for me, <laughs> Miss Aquila. 
and I got to hear conversations. Now, I, I don't know if you all are aware, when people are on public transportation, the buses, the light rail, they forget they are not in the privacy of their living room. <laughs> and they talk at the same level that they talk in their living room, do they not? So you can't help but hear their conversation. So on one bus, a young, two young people, two young females, get on the bus. They're teenagers, they're in high school, because later I hear them talk about this. And there's this, one of them has a oh, maybe 14-month-old baby boy. And the second one is carrying the other one's baby boy, but for some reason her high school uh, ID is from out of state or out of the city or whatever, and the bus driver won't let her get on for free. And so the other one says, expletives and, you know, oh, just here, put the bleeping money in the thing. I don't give a bleeping about it. I look at me, I'm bleeping on this, uh, riding free on this bus and bleeping, I gotta pay and bleeping and so forth. And there's a baby. And there's a baby. I looked at this, and then, of course, they continued their conversation, which went all downhill from that point. And there's the baby. And he's just looking from one to the other. And he may not understand the words, but I knew he understood the energy. And, of course, this baby will perpetuate the same behavior and lifestyle that the mother is living, who is probably perpetuating the lifestyle her mother lived, who probably is perpetuating the lifestyle her mother lived. I'm going to be real today. And so I sat there and I said, what in the world are we doing? I said, well, I'm going to talk about it on Sunday, so. Then the next bus, <laughs> there are three men having a conversation. And they're bragging about walking behind this man in the neighborhood who's always dropping 10s and 20s and 50s on the ground. And somebody said, you, you, do you give him back to him? No, I don't give it back to him. I keep it. They're bragging about this. I'm saying, what in the world are we doing? Because, see, there are universal laws. We don't get away with nothing, honey. And so if I could have a bird's eye view of their lives, I'd be willing to bet that money is being lost 10 times over in their lives. But they're excited because they got away with something which they never get away with. So I said, what in the world are we doing? And I said, yeah, but it's what in the world are we not doing? I thought about a quote from Ernest Holmes and he said, our life or our lives are a mirror of the thoughts that the thinker is thinking. The thoughts of the one who is thinking it, our lives. So, so we can expand it. Our world is a mirror of the thoughts of the thinker who is thinking it. And so, and I say, what in the world are we doing? What I am seeing on the news and the reality shows and our children's behavior and so forth is what I have put out there. Because as a truth student, it is my responsibility to participate in this world and in my life as if I really am a truth student. There is a scripture, Paul's letter to the Romans. I know you all are familiar with this one. It says, do not conform to the things of the world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. 
So what I'm seeing, it looks as if we have been conforming to the things of this world and staying in our little typical ordinary routine spiritual practices and not renewing the fire, the sacred fire that brought us to these new thought teachings in the first place. See, it's not enough to just sit and pray and meditate the same way every day. You got to add some sacred fire to it. You have to renew, to renew your commitment to living as a truth student. It's not enough to do it. You've got to be it. So it's no longer doobie doobie do. It's be doobie doobie. We've got to get that sacred fire back. So it means we have to renew our mind. So what is this renewal of mind? Brings me to another scripture in Matthew, which says, let the mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Okay, now understand, I'm not talking about the man Jesus. I'm talking about the divine nature the divine mind that expressed itself through this dude that gave him the power to make things happen. Like walk on water, part the Red Sea, make the blind see, my favorite, turn water into wine. A good Cabernet. Here's the deal. You have this power. You are this power. You just forgot. And it's showing up in our world, big time. You are the Christ. You are the divine of God. You are the beloved of God in whom God is well pleased and whose good pleasure is to give you the kingdom of heaven right here, right now. but we've got to renew our minds. And renewing our minds being keeping ourselves aligned with what it is to be a truth student 365. Not just when you come here, you know, y'all took me back to Zion Traveler's First Baptist Church this morning. <laughs> So not when you just come here and you feel the spirit and you're up dancing and clapping and raising your hand going hallelujah, amen, and a-women. And yeah. I'm talking about Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Because we've got to turn this ship around. I don't think I ain't going to let nobody turn me around. But we've got to turn this ship around because it's heading into some stormy seas. Very stormy seas. And who's to blame? Us, me. I take full responsibility whenever I see anything that is the antithesis of what I know to be the truth. So do not conform to the things of this world. The New Living uh, uh, Bible says, do not copy the things of this world. Don't copy them. Don't be like the world. See, because you are in the world, but you are not of the world. Ernest Holmes says, we are born of God, and we are born of an urge to create. An urge to create. A desire. That's not just as, oh, I think I might want to create. No, 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 no urge, got to, I got to create. But here's the deal, it's a two-edged sword. It can go left or it can go right. It can go light or it can go dark. And what facilitates the direction that it goes in, it is our mind. Mental images needing direction. 
mind. Mental images needing direction. Remember, thoughts are things. Thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. And you can be doing your meditating and your praying and so forth, but if you walk down the street and you look at somebody that you think is less than you and you say, oh, look at her, or look at him, oh, it's disgusting. Thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. So you begin to have show up in your vision, in your news and so forth, all of the disgusting things that you have named. Are you with me? Okay. Just want to make sure. People got kind of quiet there for me. Mm. So the mind is the key because it is consciousness, consciousness, consciousness. What you are seeing on the news is consciousness. What you are seeing as behavior in our children is consciousness. What you are seeing on television in these insane reality shows is consciousness. The level of the collective predominant consciousness on the planet is playing out on the big screen live and in living color so that we can see it and do something about it. Not just turn the TV off and say, oh, look at the news. Doesn't matter if you look at it or not, it's there. And it's perpetuating itself every day, unless we truth students take action. And how do we take this action? Our older brother Jesus said, there will come one after me, I will send you a comforter. I will send you one who will come to you in your time of need. And he was talking about the Holy Spirit. So we need to bring that sacred fire, because that's what the Holy Spirit is. The Holy Spirit is a sacred fire. The Holy Spirit, according to Charles Fillmore, is also the divine feminine. See, we got a lot of masculine energy on this planet. No offense, guys, because you have both masculine and feminine. But we have allowed the scales to tip in the direction of the masculine energy, and we've gone technology crazy, and we have forgotten about spirit, which is feminine. We have got to bring these two back into a sacred marriage. So that's what we're seeing happening. So we need the spirit. This morning I was, Brenda and I were listening to um, one of my playlists and the song came up from Agape, Agape. And I want to invite you to sing this with me. I'll sing it once. And the song is, Oh Lord, we need your spirit, your Holy Spirit. Right now, oh Lord, send us your spirit, your Holy Spirit, right now. Come on, join me. Oh Lord, we need your spirit. Your Holy Spirit right now, oh Lord, send us your Spirit, your Holy Spirit right now. Lift up your hands and I want you to feel it like a fire burning in your being. Oh, Lord, we need your spirit, your Holy Spirit, right now. Oh, Lord, 
send us your spirit, your Holy Spirit, right now. Mm, Ashe. You feel it? Yes. Do you feel it? Yes. So say, th- say with me three times, come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Stop. Just feel it. Again, come Holy Spirit. And one more time. Come Holy Spirit. Do you feel the energy in the room? See, we got to bring that Holy Mother back into this planet so that she can join with the Holy Father in each of us. And we can have more, a more balanced life. And when we bring the Holy Spirit in, when we start living our lives as truth students, we start putting into practice, not just for us, but for the entire world, those things you are learning here with Reverend Georgia, or the things you learn at SLC with Reverend Trapp, or at Christ Unity with Reverend Kev Ross, or wherever you are getting these principles that are not yet in the average realm of consciousness, you need to use them. They need to be used. Day by day by day by day. Consciously, consciously, living consciously. That's what this is all about, living consciously. See, we, when it says you're in the world, but not of the world, it means that while we do live in this R-E-L, lowercase R-E-A-L world, where we're seeing all this stuff play out, we are actually of, made of, part of, existing from the capital R reality. And there is a difference. There there is a difference. We can walk in the midst of chaos. We can dance on the edge of chaos, but we can remember and act as if we are still in the realm of divine truth. Because here's the deal. How you judge it is how you experience it. If you judge it as bad, negative, wrong, disgusting, that's going to be your experience of it. So we got to walk here, but we got to talk and think at a higher consciousness. It is time to elevate the consciousness of the world. See, all we need You may not realize, a critical mass can change the world. A critical mass is only 1% of the population. That's all we need, 1%. And we will change the world like that. But we have got to renew the commitment, the dedication that we made in the first place. How many of you remember the first time you walked into a New Thought Church, how you felt? Raise your hand. I know you're in here. How many of you felt like you had come home? Do you remember how on fire and fed and full you felt? Well, that's what I'm talking about. You got to get that back. Because if you walk out into the world fired up, you're going to fire that person on the bus who's talking something negative. They're going to get fired up because they're just going to feel your energy. Guy on the, on the second bus was admiring my coat, and he, says, he said, there's something about you. You're just so beautiful. I said, I've got the Holy Spirit in me. I said, that's what rocks my world. So we got to get that back, my brothers and sisters. Because you see, the world is in need of it. We can bring heaven right here. 
God said, that Jesus said, speaking from the guidance of God, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, if something is at hand, it's kind of close by, right? I mean, if you have some salt at hand, it's, it's usually right there where you can shake it on something, right? Okay, so the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That must mean that is here already. We just can't see it because our vision is clouded by what we are choosing to see. So we've got to take those cloudy lens off of, I th we're all suffering from spiritual cataracts. So we've got to have those cataracts removed so we can see truly, so we can see clearly what is the truth. I'm going to share something with you. I'm going a little bit off course, but when the Sandy Hook situation happened, first thing I did was pray for the perpetrator, for the gunman. Because, see, that's who needed it the most. See, I believe that those kids, we had become so numb to violence, these souls say, we're going to go in and we're going to demonstrate in such a big way that they'll have no choice but to wake up and start the conversation. And is the conversation happening? A little child shall lead them. Those souls made a powerful decision. See, we saw children. They were probably ancient souls that made a decision, let's go in and let's do this. Let's do this. Because we got to wake these people up. And yeah, you know, the parents that we chose are going to be grieving and people, but they're going to wake up and they're going to start to talk about this as if it really is something that needs to be done. And it's happening. And you can criticize Barack Obama if you want to. But you tell me why we need to go hunting with assault rifles. We need to stop playing these games with ourselves and each other because I'm getting a little tired of hearing about assault rifles and people, why they need to have. We're not going to give up our assault. Why? What in the world are we doing? So that's what I'm talking about. But how do we do it? How do we do it? We have to renew our minds. Renew our minds. Rededicate ourselves to our original purpose as truth students, to transform ourselves and through that transformation, the world. Because I, I don't think you all did this just for yourself, did you? Oh, uh, okay. Because as within, hello. Hello. So I got some steps for you. You ready for some steps? You all know me. I always give steps. Yes. Don't I, Brenda? I do. I give steps all the time. Uh, people can remember steps. You know, people like steps. <laughs> so this is seven steps to living, to walking and living in the world, but not of the world. And the first step is to remember who you are are. You are a spiritual being having a spiritual experience on a human plane in the body. You are not a human being. And the experiences you have are spiritual. They are happening for you, not to you. Take a deep breath. Yeah. Because you see, if you're a spiritual being, you can't be having anything but a spiritual experience. And if it's a spiritual experience and it's happening for you, either to wake you up or to have you see something that needs to be healed within you. If you have had any violent thoughts or emotions and you're seeing all this violence, go inside. Because see, what I do is I look at the news and go, that's me too. That's me too. That's me too. I take full responsibility. And then I start checking myself. I start looking at what am I thinking? What am I feeling? What am I saying? How am I being with people? 
and I start making adjustments. I make course corrections. So remember who you are. You are a beloved of God in whom God is well pleased and whose good pleasure it is to give you the kingdom of heaven right here, right now. You're made in the image and likeness of that which created the universe. Therefore, you are powerful beyond measure. You are giants, not grasshoppers. Act like it. Ready for step two? Know the difference between what is real and what is reality. What is real is these things you see with the senses, you experience with the senses. What is reality is the perfection, the allness, the abundance, the love of God, or the grand operational design, as I call it. Or the I am. Know the difference between what is real and what's Memorex. <laughs> between what is real and what is reality. Because see, otherwise, that's how you get caught up and get conformed to the things of the world when you don't remember that's not reality. That's what's happening right now. That's what I'm seeing with my eyes. But that's not truth. And the moment you shift your vision and say, I am willing to see the perfection in this situation, I am willing to bring my consciousness of reality into this, it changes. Yes. Yes. Step three. Understand and align with the spiritual laws. Understand and align with the spiritual laws. The law of compensation, what you give out is what you get back. The law of cause and effect. That which you put out, you think, is what becomes your reality, your experience. No, there are many places you can find the spiritual laws. Find them and align with them. Because you see, ignorance of the law is no excuse. It's still going to come back at you because the laws are neutral. They only operate according to how you use them. The next. Become the observer of your life. I've been talking a lot about this to my classes and to my friends. We have to step outside of our lives and watch carefully who we are being in each and every moment and in each and every situation. Am I being that truth student I sit there on Sunday and say I am? Or am I conforming to the things of the world? Because you see, if, you don't, uh, if you're not aware that you've stepped off the path, if you're not aware that you've forgotten the difference between real and reality, you're just going to keep going down that wrong path. Yeah. But if you're observing yourself being the truth student, in this world of humanity, you'll be able to catch yourself and check yourself and make a course correction. Amen. Are you with me? Ah, yeah. Yeah. And that does take practice. Yes, does. yes, but you can do it. You can do it. The next, stay awake, aware, and focused. Don't go, to, don't go back to sleep. We did that. It took the Sandy Hook thing to wake us up, and we finally stayed awake. Let's see, 9-11 woke us up, and we went, oh. <laughs> and I can just name other stuff that came along. And we went, oh, this is terrible, <laughs> and went back to sleep. You got to stay awake now. You're awake, and I know you're awake. I can tell. I can tell by the movement on this planet that people are finally awake. Stay awake, stay aware, 
be watchful so that you, you, can, you can make an adjustment when you find yourself or you see something happening and you start to judge and you go, I behold the Christ in that situation. I'm willing to see the perfection in that situation. That is my sister. That is my brother. Because see, when you point the finger, take a look. Take a look. Three of them are pointing back at you. If you spot it, you got it. Because you see, you wouldn't see it in someone if you didn't already have it. I'm just saying. <laughs> I know, I know. You all might stone me by the time I leave here. <laughs> the next step, carry and use and keep filled your toolkit. Keep a toolkit of prayer, meditation, denials, affirmation, love, and peace, and walk around being focused and aware and observing is, oh, no peace. Mm. Oh, that needs a little love. Oh, I need to uh, deny this has no power over me or these wonderful people around me. But the truth of God is present in everything. Do, do you get how to use these, this, your tool belt? You, you know, you can wear a tool belt, tool kit, whatever you want to call it. You can have a Gucci bag with just tools in it. <laughs> Doesn't matter. And then the last one, practice, practice, practice. How do you get to Carnegie Hall? Practice, practice, practice. You see, if you are doing this consistently, consciously and consistently, my beloveds. If you are staying true to what you know is truth, that critical mass will begin to rise up. And without a shot being fired, war will end. Without prisons and retribution, violence, will stop. Without additional monies, which are not available, education will happen because we will pull forth from our kids what they already know. Because see, the word education comes from the Latin word educare, which means to draw out, not put in. So what if they keep taking the money and putting into, into defense? That's okay. Hold that vision and we will begin to draw the information from our children and they will be brilliant. And we won't need more weapons at school. Oh my God, they're gonna, they want armed guards at the school. But see, that's our fault. I'm sorry, we went to sleep and we allowed Oh, God forgive me. The NRA to take over politics. And so guns are everywhere because we were asleep. Not saying you can't have your hunting rifle. Can't say, I'm not saying you can't have a little something at your house to protect your family. But you don't need an assault weapon. <laughs> Unless you're going to go and assault somebody. I know Reverend Georgia may never bring me back here again. <laughs> And as we do this, my beloveds, as we do this, we will no longer see the anger, the rage, the violence, the ugliness of the world. With this new vision, with this new consciousness, we will begin to see and know it is a wonderful world.